Hello and welcome to Composer Technologies demo on Composer Cyphersoft for converting Oracle Forms applications to Java. For those of you new to Composer Technologies, we are a US-based company that does application modernizations worldwide. The objective for today's demonstration is to show you how easy it can be to convert an Oracle Forms application into a Java application with Composer Cyphersoft. We will spend a few minutes on the capabilities and benefits of Composer Cyphersoft so you have some context going into the demo. We will then demo the conversion of an Oracle Forms application into Java. The Composer Cyphersoft solution has been out for over 10 years and conversions can be delivered as a service or the tool can be licensed with training and support. The tool was purpose-built for migrating Oracle Forms applications, but it can also be used for PL SQL code conversions that are not part of an Oracle Forms application in certain situations. With Composer CypherSoft, you can migrate the entire Oracle Forms application to Java with a browser-based presentation layer. Much of the conversion is automated, but there are some items that are not converted automatically due to environmental differences between Oracle Forms and a three-tier Java enterprise architecture. As part of the tool, there is an analyzer utility which will flag these differences so the time and effort to complete the migration can be estimated. The generated application is 100% Java, and it can be maintained and extended in most Java IDEs. All of the Java source code is provided, so there are no runtime licensing dependencies. Also, the application can be deployed to most Java EE compliant application servers. Oracle WebLogix, IBM WebSphere, and Tomcat are the most common platforms. The solution does not convert Oracle reports. Typically, customers either call the Oracle reports from the generated Java application or rewrite the reports into the reporting standard they have established. There are also some libraries in Oracle Forms apps, like WebUtil, that will not be converted since this is Oracle intellectual property. However, like the environmental differences mentioned, there are alternatives and best practices for addressing these in Java. Now we just went through the capabilities of the solution at a high level, but let's take a moment to outline the key benefits of CypherSoft. These are some of the most common points customers say distinguish CypherSoft from other alternatives. The solution converts the forms, menus, and libraries, including all of the business logic. This includes providing all of the underlying capabilities that the Oracle Forms framework provided. Customers have provided feedback that this saves them anywhere from 3x to 5x reduction in time over the rewrite estimates. In addition to producing clean Java code, the file structure of the components and objects are organized in the Java IDE much as they were in Oracle Forms. This includes the naming conventions of the objects and triggers. This provides a reference point that both the original Forms developers and the Java developers can follow. For Oracle Forms developers, this also eases the learning curve into Java. Customers also emphasize the benefit of maintaining the look, feel, and navigation for the initial conversion. Reproducing all of the functionality of the application is not enough. It needs to behave similarly over in the new environment in order to minimize the impact on the end users and avoid retraining. Avoiding retraining can be a significant cost savings. Customers have also found it's much more straightforward to test in a like-for-like -like conversion to make sure all of the functionality and behavior is present. User testing in the new application is more difficult if you can't compare it directly with the original Forms application in a like-for-like -like manner. With that background, let's go into the demonstration. And here's what you're going to see in the demo. We will convert the Oracle Summit application. It is not as large as some customer applications, but it has menus, libraries, and business logic that you see in most complex forms. If this was run through the analyzer utility, it would come up as uh, high, simple, or a low intermediate complexity because of its smaller size. This is a full conversion, and note that you can just do pieces. For example, just convert the PL SQL business logic or once converted, you could reconvert the presentation layer into a different option. 
After converting the application, we'll deploy it to an app server so you can see it running side by side with the Oracle Forms application. You can see how the impact to the end users is minimized. We'll also look at the converted code in a Java IDE and you'll see how the project hierarchy and naming of the components is maintained. With that, I'll uh, switch over to the application so we can do the demo. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring up the Oracle Forms application. Uh, that's the Summit application. And it consists of three forms, one menu, and two libraries. And as you can see, it has um, the navigation and functionality you would see in a lot of Oracle Forms apps. For example, there's this tree hierarchy on the left-hand side, and you can dynamically change uh, the view of that, in this case by sales rep, and that's using a trigger uh, in the forms application. Um, you can double-click. Uh, that's a, a common event in Oracle Forms apps, and this brings up one of the other forms, the order form. And, you know, you have all of these radio buttons here. And if you, when you exit out of this form, you get an alert, uh, another piece of business logic. And you can see how the data dynamically changes as you go through these different canvases and tabs. Um, if, in fact, I'll go back to the third tab here. Here's a list of value that comes up as well. So a lot of the elements you see uh, that are characteristic of uh, customer applications out there that have some level of complexity. So that's pretty much uh, the the existing forms app I want to show in terms of navigation and functionality. Now what we'll do is go ahead and convert it. And so what I'll do is I'll bring up the CypherSoft or Composer CypherSoft solution. It's a very nice, easy to use kind of wizard driven interface. And when we go to convert, what we typically do in our conversion process is we convert the libraries first. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the libraries. And as, as you remember, I said there were two libraries um, in this application. We want to convert both. And I'll go ahead and hit Convert. And you see this window that comes up. This is a report or a log file for every time a conversion is done. It'll tell you whether it was converted successfully or if there are items that need to be addressed in order to compile this. And also, customer in customer projects, they use all of these log files as a record of every single conversion step that was done in the project and when. So we've done the um, uh, library, so the next thing we're going to do is the menus, or in this case, menu, since there's only one. So I'll go ahead and convert this. Again, we get a log file. We've done the libraries, we've done the menu, so the last thing that we need to actually convert are the forms. And if you recall, there are three forms to convert. And those three forms are the um, customer form, or customer's form, I should say, the order's form, and the pick form. So we select all of those and bring those over to convert. All right, and we show that from the log file, we had a successful conversion of the forms. So now that we've converted the, the primary components of this forms application, we're ready to deploy it. So from the Composer tool, it will actually generate a WAR file for deployment of this web-based or browser-based application. Now, when you do that, you have to specify what is the main form or the entry level form. In this case, it's that customer's form. So we did that, and we're, we're not going through all the, I'm just using the default settings in this wizard, but there are lots of options that you have uh, to tailor the conversion to the requirements of your project. Now I went ahead and I did it very quickly here, but we have a, a, a window that this was successfully um, uh, packaged up into a WAR file. So what it did was it took all of the, the converted Java components from the conversion process we just went through and packaged it up in a WAR file. 
Now that we've done that, we're ready to deploy this to an application server. So in order to do that, I'm going to go to the output file. This is where all the output items are uh, from our conversion process. And there is the WAR file. And I'm going to make a copy of the WAR file so that I can deploy it into our application server. Now for the purposes of this demo, we're using Tomcat as the application server uh, because it has such a small, light footprint which makes it much easier on our demo machines and laptops. But as I mentioned, this can be deployed out um, depending on your deployment process and your deployment uh, uh, platform, whether it be WebLogix or WebSphere, whatever application server it may be. Um, you can go through the process that's required. So now that we have that there in Tomcat, we can go ahead and start Tomcat up. And what it's doing is it's taking that WAR file and deploying it out into the application server environment. We got a message here that this was uh, deployed successfully. So now that that's happened, we should be able to bring up this application in a browser. So what I did is I just brought up a browser that we can uh, deploy this in. And because I've uh, done a, a conversion before, I have the URL for this application handy. And it brought up a login screen. So this is in a browser, but if you were in the Oracle Forms app, uh, when you first bring it up, you would have to log in as well. So I'll go ahead and log in, and we should see that customer's form as the entry-level form. And there it is. So what I'm going to do is just adjust the size here so that we can compare it side by side with the original forms application. Let me bring this over here and then let me bring up the summit application as well. There we go. And now let me adjust this one so we can do it side by side. All right. So, as you can see, a very similar look and feel. Let's go ahead and look at some of the user navigation and business logic I had touched on before. You have the different hierarchy views. Um, so that shows an example of triggers being brought over. Let's try the double click. That brings up the order form and we have these buttons still. Let's see, when we exit, if we get an alert, which we do. And then you can see we can dynamically go through these tabs here on the browser version. And here's the list of values. And as you can see, that's brought up as well in its own little window. So that's, it, that shows you how similar the navigation is and the look and feel, which will really minimize the impact to the end users and also make uh, the uh, user testing of the application uh, much more straightforward. Now that we've done that, why don't we go ahead and uh, look at the, some of the Java code um, in a Java IDE. And since we've been doing this side by side, I'm going to go ahead and bring up the Forms Builder over here as well. So here we go, and the uh, Java IDE that we're using in this uh, demo is Oracle J Developer. But the first thing I want to show you is how we have this project folder, and there's the company, if you remember from looking at the uh, interface, the, comp the name of the app was Summit, the company name was SportsCo, and then you can see in this project folder we have a folder for libraries, menus, and then for the forms that are all under Summit. So we should see two libraries, which we do. There's only one menu and its associated objects. And then under Summit, we have the three forms. 
Now for showing an example of Java code, I'm going to use that main form that we were in, which is the customer's form, and I'll go down to the Java source. And then you can see that this is all Java code for the application. And I'm going to scroll down here. I want to find a, an example to show you um, of how the naming convention is kept. In fact, here's a, here's a good one. Uh, when new form instance. So this is something that an Oracle Forms developer will recognize. Uh, it's a command that's used. And you can see this is all in Java, but it has very similar naming conventions. So that you can see how easily it can be to navigate through an application you're familiar with and go into the code and know what that code is doing, even though it's in Java. Now the other thing I want to point out here is you see these built-in functions right here. And these are examples of that framework I mentioned. Uh, these are all Java classes and methods that are part of the CypherSoft solution. And you get the source code to this without a runtime license fee. And this provides all of that underlying capabilities that the Oracle Forms framework provided to the Oracle Forms application. One great example of that is you have all these triggers um, in your application. And there's triggers at the form level, there's triggers at the data block level, there's triggers at the, um, the, the component level or item level, if you will. And the Oracle Forms framework uh, managed all of those triggers firing in the proper sequence depending on how the application was coded. So all of, the, all of that is a part of this framework as well that you get the source code to uh, on the Java side. Really cuts down um, on the level of code you have to do versus a rewrite. And then besides these built-in functions, it's just uh, a pretty much a one-for-one -one conversion in terms of lines of code uh, for the actual customer application or code itself. The other nice thing is that now that you have this over in Java, um, you can take advantage of um, the Java environment itself. So for example, I can click on one of these and I can go to the Java doc, I can go to the declaration, and you can see it brings this other tab up with the, the declaration of that um, uh, function. Um, there's also a lot of third-party tools now available to you now that you have this over in Java um, as a developer for things like looking at uh, orphan code or dead code. Um, that's just one of many examples of the types of things you have available to you now that uh, were not so easy to find or do on the Oracle form side. So just another benefit of uh, what you get for converting this application into Java. So that's pretty much what I wanted to show you in the demo. And so with that, we'll wrap it up. You know, we started with uh, showing you, uh, just giving you an overview of the capabilities and benefits of the solution. And then we went into a demo where we showed you a forms application and navigated through it and did the conversion and then just showed you how you get that similar look and feel and behavior uh, to minimize impact to the end users and uh, to the uh, testing piece as well as showing you how the Composer CypherSoft solution maintains the structure and hierarchy and naming conventions uh, to make this uh, process of migrating over to the, to the Java platform in a browser-based presentation layer very smooth and very low risk. I want to thank you for your interest in the demo and have a great day.